Australians are seeing around the world what's happening and um, you know the shifts forward but still aren't seeing a shift in 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 what the governments here in Australia are doing so um, we weren't really surprised a little bit but not too much because we did know that people are cottoned on and and in spite of all the promises that you know the Liberal governments were making and 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 Greg Hunt the, the health minister talking about you know more patients and more products being approved at the end of the day it's not quick enough it's just not quick enough and 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 what it showed is people didn't care about immigration, education, all this funding and, and, and uh, you know, franking credits and things like that. Their number one thing was their health and, and getting cannabis re-legalised. I think it's fair to say that we're all really a bit surprised, pleasantly surprised by the, the vote for the Hemp Party. Thank you, everyone who voted for us. But uh, at the same time, you know... It, it's the words out there. In the last, since the election three years ago, there's, there's been a lot of publicity on, on weed, on medical cannabis, on what's happening in America and Canada and now Europe. CBD is fully legal in, in England, you know, and we're still being hunted. So, you know, for a lot of people, it's an issue that's come up strongly. A lot of people know someone are using medical cannabis or want to be able to. The other thing that's really put on the agenda is roadside drug testing, which is seriously unfair for cannabis users. And as the years go on, we'll see what a total mess the saliva testing has, is causing and will continue to cause. And, and there's, there's basically no, no leg it can really stand on. Um, but when you have you know, ulterior motives and forces that want to get things like this in, um, and, and at the end of the day, um, we followed the money trail, and there is a money trail, and, and someone's making a lot of money. And whoever's selling us these, these dodgy devices and the strategy is making a lot of money. Um, you, you know, the more I see around the, the world where they're talking about this kind of testing, I'm, I, my financial advice would be get involved and, and get shares in the company that gets the exclusive rights to supply these devices. Um, don't think you you know these this kind of strategy doesn't help it, it's actually making drug use trends worse in Australia and you know to any intelligent person they can see that we can't have a meaningful medical cannabis regime with a saliva testing in place and the way they're doing it um, you know it's quite simple that the governments have to redraw the line on drugs to the other side of cannabis and get all these cannabis users on site, millions of Australians, if we really want to fight, you know, other drugs and, and, and more, you know, the gutter drugs and, and deplorable stuff like that. Get, get a couple of million more Australians on site. And I think if you're a, a pot user like I am, it's probably harder now than it's ever been in Australia to be a cannabis user, you know? You, well, maybe it's not true in that, you know, you'd go to jail easily 30 or 40 years ago, but you can't get away with anything now. It's like sniffer dogs are lethal. And now this saliva testing, testing your saliva, God, you know, testing your spit, it's like something out of 1984 for me. It's... Um, it's totally unfair on cannabis users because weed is fat soluble, stays in your system. It's like, I like Andrew's rave, your body doesn't want to throw out cannabis like it wants to throw out all the other chemical, unbalanced, processed drugs, but weed it wants to hang on to. And, and it does. So, you know, people are getting busted with their cannabis in their saliva, which is nothing to do with driver impairment, it's just the presence of THC in your saliva days after smoking or even cases now of passive smoking can set it off. You know, you're visiting your uncle who smokes a joint and you could test positive, what? And lose your licence automatically for three months. So it's a really harsh penalty for what we reckon is nothing to do with impaired driving. So that's seriously a bad thing. It's pissed off a lot of people, upset a lot of people big time. I know a lot of people stop smoking, drinking more instead, or got high anxiety driving, or stop driving. The hills around Nimbin are full of the Coles delivery truck now, which is really, you know, you get your groceries delivered, smoke as much weed as you like at home, 
and just stop driving. That's happening with lots of people, long-term cannabis users. And when I say that, it's medical. You know, they're using it for a reason. They're using it because of often physical pain, back injuries especially, I find. Lots of people find cannabis is great for, and multiple operations don't help. And people are sick of opiates. Opiates are crippling in their side effects. So what's happening here is kind of what's happening in the States, you know, where they've got such an opiate crisis. Where, you know, we're on the edge of it here. So heaps of people are looking for cannabis instead. So all those things contributed to being on the agenda in a strong enough way for people to mark one hemp. We'll work out how we can use that in the future and going into other elections, there'll be by-elections and we'll definitely be there to to, um, you know, be a, a thorn in the government's side until they actually sit down and listen to us and talk to us and talk, you know, from the experience of people who have been involved in, in, in cannabis and, and meeting people and, and, and on the medical side as well. I think, you know, the government's got a perfect opportunity now to, uh, you know, to talk to hemp. So we were all really happy about the vote and I think it helped that we didn't allocate preferences to anyone. This is like a, a single issue protest vote. You know, you don't waste your vote. You make one hemp and then choose the party, whatever you like. Obviously, some parties like the Greens have a much better cannabis policy than the Liberal Party and Labor again, better than the Liberal Party, I think. But we weren't saying to people, do this or do that. This is like, this is a protest vote to make your mark how important it is to, to end prohibition of cannabis <clears throat> and especially the whole war on drugs, all of it. Although one of our biggest policies, I think, is to separate cannabis from all the other drugs. You know, it's completely different. It's a dried herb. All the other drugs are mostly chemical now or, or cocaine or, or heroin processed products. But weed is just a dried herb hanging up, you know, like it's been doing for thousands of years, like it was in virtually every medicine a hundred years ago with opium. So they're the two best painkillers on the planet, you know, and we make them illegal and build this huge jail and court and criminal industry. So we, we're nowhere near got that thinking yet politically. They're still sort of squeamish about allowing people medical use and you're not allowed to drive. But the public generally is waking up. Education is happening. And, and that it's been, you know, legal in Colorado now for so long, well, California for more than 20 years. And now the big Colorado move the last five years where they made a billion dollars already in tax. It's like, you know, no big deal. So Australia's so left behind. It's, it's embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. People don't know whether to laugh or cry. New Zealand having a referendum next year to, to fully legalise cannabis and regulate it. I mean, Australia, Nimbin, we're hammered by the cops more than ever I can ever remember. At least nine permanent police, all the street on camera to the cop shop, police up the street every day, randomly searching people, and now the saliva testing on the roads. So all that pressure, which is coming on cannabis users, is what's pushed people to vote, I reckon. To get to get double the votes we got last time is really surprising. The other thing I think we're, what we're ultimately trying to do is just get it on the agenda. You know, it keeps getting swept under the carpet on all levels of parliament. And if the higher, the more votes we can get, the more people are going to look at it. And certainly they looked at this vote and at some point it has to be dealt with. And, you know, I, I look forward to having a go. I have to have a go at talking to ScoMo. From what I hear, he has a close relative using medical cannabis. There's people everywhere using medical cannabis. You know, it still never ceases to amaze me, that kind of thing where, you know, we start seeing the numbers in the, 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 the dollars in politics now. and We've got a taste of that with One Nation um, and, and now, you know, 60 million by, by Palmer. Oh, I just think that, you know, people aren't dumb. You know, the electorate isn't stupid. Um, and, and with the cannabis situation, the issues can, that are going to come up, I think that, you know, forget about that kind of money. I, I think, you know, Michael's quite right when he says that um, whoever win, was going to win the next government will have to deal with cannabis. So I think in the next three years, 
there'll be a seismic shift in the debate and we should see some very progressive um, policies coming out. And this is what should happen, that will benefit and, and there'll be all sorts of unintentional positive consequences. So I think that, you know, well thought out drug policy in relation to medical cannabis and cannabis in, by and large, I think that's where we'll, we'll find, you know, great benefits to the country and for people. And, um, you know, we'll be able to reflect, you know, these positive things that are happening over the, in other countries. We didn't really have any money for a campaign. We, we had to scratch to get the money together to run all the candidates. And, you know, if we had more money and campaigned and, you know, put up a, a little TV ad or something, I don't know, you, there's lots you could do, but primarily for us it's about getting it on the agenda, education, getting, getting people to know the truth. We've been seriously lied to. The war on drugs basically hardly got a mention in this election, and in the recent New South Wales state election it was similar, although Labor was promising to have a drug summit if they got elected, and they didn't. But we are, you know, rednecks have totally got hold of it. And um, Scott Morrison, you know, the born-again Christian thing, drugs are still in the evil empire for him, I reckon. So it's going to be really interesting what happens in Australia the next few years because everywhere else is waking up. We are so far behind politically, but the public is onto it. And to the extent now where, I mean, one of the reasons they've changed the instant loss of licence for any presence of drug now, it's going to be instant loss of licence in New South Wales, is because magistrates weren't taking people's licences away and police aren't taking people's medicine away. So even government departments are way ahead of the politicians having to sort of make, make decisions for themselves. It's really tricky. But the pharmaceutical industry has to be the player. You know, they're just going to lose so much money with, with cannabis becoming legal, medical cannabis. We've already seen it in America, in states where there's legal medical cannabis now, sales of a lot of pharmaceutical drugs have collapsed. I just, um, you know, I'm hearing now lots of stories and seeing people who are getting legal medical cannabis of the 4,000 people in Australia only after three years who can get legal medical cannabis. The gate is so narrow and what they're getting is kind of not necessarily an inferior product but a product that often doesn't work and it's five or ten times more expensive than the black market. I, I, I don't think it's even just cannabis. I think that, you know, they're building a new jail down the road in Grafton, the biggest jail in Australia now, all privatised, owned by Serco, who built Manus Island and Nauru, global security people, and it'll be like a hotel. They won't build it unless it's going to be 95% full. Recidivism? in Australia, where people keep going back to jail, is massive. We're just on this cycle. And it's the same poor old 5% of the population who, you know, had a hard time in the beginning anyway. Had an alcoholic father or broken family or whatever, you know, and instead of actually trying to help people, this, this bottom 5%, we just hammer them. We turn them into making money. So, you know, big changes have to happen. People are realising it. The, you know, it helped that I think, you know, Labor Party put us on their how to vote card this time, so more and more people soon. We've got a new rush of members online because you can just join online. And, and even though we've got five or maybe 7,000 members, but five solid ones, I know, um, we've got a rush of members. People suddenly discovered, oh, there's a, there's a hemp party, a help end marijuana prohibition. So we didn't know that, mate. Let's vote for them. There's a lot of that going on. Mm. We've never got a budget. Uh, you know, we haven't got the money. We've occasionally got donations, much appreciated, that enabled us to do a bit. We printed a few core flutes. We probably spent a couple of thousand bucks. Quite literally, yeah, with, with, with what Clive Palmer spent, um, you know, it became obvious to us that Australians aren't dumb. And, 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 you know, while the government stalls and doesn't do things to progress cannabis issues, I think, you know, the vote for hemp will go up and up and up and up and, and it will come from both sides and even from the Greens. It, it's only a government that can change the laws, not a, an opposition or a micro party or a minor party. It has to be the government and that's where 
I think that, you know, we have to step in there. The government needs to talk to us, not talking to other parties through other parties. Um, you know, we're the advocates. Um, hemp is 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 a, a single issue party. Um, it'd be like trying to trying to address you know gay rights and 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 law reforms around gay issues without having gays on board. I mean that that's what the government's trying to run at the moment too. So people should see see through that, and I think they are more and more every day. One of the other things that I think helps us is people are so scared of putting their hand up for cannabis law reform because you become a target. People are going to know, you know, you lose your job. You lose your job all over the place now if you're a pot smoker, you know. But in the polling booth, when you vote on that day, it's anonymous. No one knows. So it's a real chance to make a, you know, make a mark to end the cannabis laws, and you're not wasting your vote, you're giving it to whoever you want after, but it's like a, some kind of referendum on a small scale where you can make a make and no one knows. You're not gonna lose your job, the cop, cops aren't gonna knock on your door. It's only us unemployed hippies in Nimbin that can talk about it, mate. We're expected to smoke weed, surely. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of enthusiasm from this result. People want to register the state parties because the feds pass it off all the time and say, oh, it's a state issue. But I've watched it for, for 30 years now. You know, the state's put up an idea, John Howard especially, he just tread on it straight away. So, and it'd be crazy to have, you know, Queensland's got it legal, but New South Wales hasn't. Like what's happening in America, it's crazy stuff, you know. So it should be a federal issue. It should be a nationwide issue. There should be a drug summit in Canberra, I reckon. Let's have a fresh look at this. Let's bring in the experts. Let's be game to turn over the rock. But anyway, there's a lot of new enthusiasm to register state parties. I think Queensland, Victoria, Tassie, South Australia and Western Australia, all got people keen to get registered. New South Wales is really difficult to register, but you know we need people who want to put in the time, it's, it's paperwork, you've got, to, you've got to actually get the numbers and then the AEC contacts you, the Electoral Commission contacts you, you know, you get a phone call, oh I just want to confirm you're a member of the Hemp Party, people go, well, oh no, no mate, he left, he's not here anymore. You know, people, the fear, is massive on this, on prohibition. It's a war. I think people laugh at our war on drugs. It's not really a war. It's a bloody war, mate. When the helicopter's over your house hammering away or, or your kids get busted and get a criminal record, which is going to taint the rest of their life, you know, it's a, it's a war. And, um, and, and it mightn't be bullets in the old school way, but it's just wrecking people's lives all over the place because it, it it seriously is a kind of a universal almost good for everybody medicine you don't have to get stoned this is like a health tonic as well you know and we're, we're talking about the flowers whereas the seed hemp seed oil i think from what i read it's probably better than fish oil and you know look how we need to look after the oceans anyway when you put that that bit of knowledge together and then you think about you know, we could have been growing hemp instead of cotton and doesn't use the pesticides, doesn't need all the water cotton uses. I think that fish kill was a, a big environmental wake up for a lot of the public this year in Australia. Hemp can be in so many things. Wood chip, we could end wood chip tomorrow if we grew hemp, the superior product anyway. So it's all about economics, you know. You know, mashing up fish is probably cheaper. Growing cotton is less money in processing. It's always money that makes our decisions. And, and until we start making decisions that are more long-term future, earth-based, looking after where we live, where we come from, I think we're all in trouble. And, and the people who have looked at hemp realise that, you know, that old hippie saying, this is a plant that could, we've discovered a plant that can save the planet. The only problem is it's illegal. It's kind of a, a mad hippie statement, and the more I look at it, I think, ma, it's not so far off the truth. This is the plant that was holding the Himalayas together. You know, this is, it's an extraordinary plant. To, to actually have made it illegal is madness. Anyway, that, that truth is coming out there. It's all part of why people sort of voted for us, I think. You, you can't really, you know, I'm a great believer that ignorance destroys itself in the end by its very nature. 
you know, once it's brought out in the open, it's exposed. And I think that's, that's exactly what's kind of happening with the cannabis plant now globally. Suddenly it's like, oh, we've, we've been bullshitted to, we've been lied to. This is an amazing medicine that everybody could use. They're not going to all get stoned. That's another whole other picture. And uh, we could grow it ourselves and we're not going to get bad side effects. And I mean, the ke it's chemicals. The whole pharmaceutical industry is a mixture of all these things they synthesize and make. It's like, you know, we, we put our faith in, in chemicals rather than nature. It's extraordinary. It's such a no-brainer, really. Anyway, people are waking up. And people are angry, I think, about the jails, about the courts, about the endless kids getting criminal records, kids being fucked up, kids being pushed to use other drugs instead of weed because pot's so, so far and away is the easy bust. For sniffer dogs, no one carries a joint into a music festival anymore. It's all pills, isn't it? So, you know, in, in our well-meaning great clever policing with roadside drug testing and sniffer dogs, etc. We've just pushed everyone away from weed into chemical pills and powders. You don't get detected or don't smell or don't see. We've, we've changed drug trends in Australia with our policing. And it's just a tragedy, you know. People are getting that, I think. Separating cannabis is such, from all the other drugs, it's got to be the first step. Really, the whole war on drugs is off, you know. It's a health issue. People, people, I don't know about you, but, you know, people are using drugs, alcohol, cup of tea, coffee, all of it, whatever. They're just trying to feel good. They're trying to make themselves feel better if they've got pain. Most people have got pain on some level, mental, emotional, physical. We're just all trying to feel good. And how can that be a criminal issue? just that it's a fight over who's going to make the money out of taking your pain away. It's sick.